Um, it's an absolute privilege um, to be here today at the, the launch of West. Um, to be honest, I can't believe how fast um, things have actually developed. Um, I'm used to working in a sector where actually things can take quite a while, somebody has an idea, and lots of people agree that we need to do something, and then we go away, and then we come back, and we do something else. Since our first meeting, our first, the first meeting of West, or the first meeting to discuss um, the merger of West, actually took place at the end of November. So to have moved from, is it a good idea to merge Wig and Wig, Wig, and Wig to actually, here we are, launching the first new T-Shag News and having our first West event, I think says an awful lot about the commitment and the energy um, of the people behind the scenes, the people who step change and the elected safety representatives, and the people who are actually your, your colleagues who have helped organise this and, and push things forward. I think I've been in post now for nearly a year, I can't believe it. Um, I've learned, learned so many things um, about the industry, um, both, I think as has been said, the good, the bad and the ugly, and I'm not going to repeat any of that. But I think one of the things that really did strike me when I first came in was why on earth we would have two workforce groups. Um, I was brought up, uh, my, dad, my dad was a Labour councillor, um, so I was brought up in a highly politicised environment, and um, but I was always taught that actually you, you, you divide and conquer workers. Um, so the fact that we had two workforce engagement groups to me seemed absolutely bizarre. And I have worked hard um, to actually try to get consensus and to get the, the, groups, the two groups to merge together. Like Jake, I was in a fortunate position. I sat in the Step Change Leadership Team and the Chair, OIAC, that actually allowed me to influence uh, behind the scenes and to persuade people. I think there was a lot of concern initially about the idea, um, because what I was getting back from elected safety representatives and even some of my staff was that um, WEG was a bit more to do with Oil and Gas UK and the employer's side of the house, um, but WEG was where um, the workers' voices were truly heard. Um, and I didn't, sitting in Step Change, I didn't see that. I saw the elected safety representatives at Step Change actively challenge the leaders in industry. I saw those same people actually respond and listen and change their minds. So I was very, I, was, I, I, I didn't see the disconnect, but I could understand people's concerns. And I think at the time I made the commitment that actually if the merger of Wig and West didn't work, then we would, we would go back. Um, I would have to have a, a, a workforce engagement group under the Oil Industry Advisory Committee because I believe passionately in having a tripartite group. I don't see any signs of trouble. Um, in fact, as I said, what I see at the moment is a lot of energy and commitment. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm very pleased, as I've been said, um, to see so many people here today. I want to talk a wee bit more about the importance of workforce engagement to me because I, I've worked in HSE for 23 years, I've worked across all industries and I think the industries that um, are the most dynamic and actually most open to improve are those where there's a very strong culture of workforce engagement. And I think up until oil, uh, coming into oil and gas, um, the only place I'd really seen that, apart from local authorities, um, where health and safety isn't always used for best effect, it was in the mining sector. Um, we had a very strong tradition of the four mining unions engaging with the regulator and um, the, the employers and an awful lot of very active um, safety representatives below ground all working together and pulling together for the improvement of safety. But what I saw in the mining sector I also saw here, which was actually um, a, a concern I think that um, a lot of elected safety representatives um, are looking at um, conventional health and safety because that's what they've had the training in. Um, and again, across the whole industry, what I've seen is a focus, um, a, a very strong focus on successful personal safety performance, but a less good uh, performance when it comes to major hazard risk. And I was absolutely delighted when I was invited to talk to the um, WIG event in Norwich um, last September, and I met some safety elected safety representatives from Petrofac um, who had been on the new OPETO training um, for major hazard risks, and the knowledge that they had contribution that they thought that that actually made them able to, to make really, really impressed me. I have to say, the two people, I, I didn't get their names, but they are the most, two of the most impressive safety representatives I've ever met. But there's more, more to that. I'm, what I want to do is um, to make a, a very clear focus on workforce engagement for the regulator. Um, so I, I've had feedback that we can be a bit hit and miss in terms of sometimes engaging with elected safety representatives, the way in which we do it, the extent to which we do it. Um, I think we may have focused on elected safety representatives, which is a route into the workforce and to engaging them. Um, I think we can do better than that. So in looking at what I think the priorities are for the sector, um, I've identified six main aims I think the sector needs to focus on in relation to its major hazard risk control. Uh, one of those is workforce engagement. 
where I'm actually very actively making sure that we have in there a specific aim, which is aim number six, um, on the importance of workforce engagement. And what that says is that we're looking for workers and employee representatives to engage actively in health and safety matters and in particular major hazard risk control. So I need to have some objectives in terms of what are my team, what are my inspectors um, doing to actually drive some of that agenda forward and also what are my expectations of industry. So there are two objectives um, that I, I'm setting industry um, that my inspectors will be regulating against and that's two at the moment. Um, one of them um, is objective 13 um, which is actually we want duty holders to adopt the step change workforce engagement tool or any other equally effective system. I can't push everybody to do step change, but what we have with the step change tool is something that actually has already been rolled out across a large number of organisations that actually measures workforce engagement. And I think the challenge is not just I wanting people to adopt the tool, because actually doing a survey once doesn't actually do anything to improve safety. What I'll be looking for and what my inspectors will be looking for are the action plans that follow in behind that to actually make sure that we are driving workforce engagement um, forward in the industry. The second objective, um, I said, uh, all operators, all employers um, are legally obliged to make sure that their elected safety representatives are competent. And to that end, um, my expectation will be that over the period of three years, that all operators, all employers will actually put their elected safety representatives through the Peter Major Hazards training, uh, and that will come obviously at no cost to themselves. I see that actually as potentially one of the biggest step changes um, in terms of driving industry performance. Across my 23 years, I've seen so many examples of where good workforce engagement can actually help drive standards. I know we've got some good workforce engagement in this industry. I went last year to the Oil and Gas Safety Awards um, and I saw the examples um, of the work that elected safety representatives have been doing to drive improvement. Not just safety improvement, but also business improvement, which is really, really important. This year, um, I'm lucky enough to be selected um, to judge um, the category for the elected safety representative of the year, and I'm really, really looking forward um, to doing that. I think, like Jake, um, well, actually, there's, one, there's like one other thing I want to talk to you about. I just remembered. Um, I sat, I've just come through from the, um, the Step Change Leadership Breakfast, and we, had a, we were having a discussion about um, major hazard risk control and the hydrocarbon release um, target and the fact that the industry's performance has deteriorated. And um, we asked, uh, we were all asked um, to respond to a few questions, one of which was, um, as a member of State Change and a part of the leadership of the industry, um, do you feel accountable for the delivery of the industry's target to reduce hydrocarbon release by 50%? 30% of the people in that room said no. 30% of the leaders in that room said that they had no responsibility, did not feel that they were accountable for the delivery of that target. So when um, Jeff, who was chairing the session, asked if, someone, asked if anybody wanted to put their hand up and explain um, why they'd come to answer no, nobody put their hand up. That says something to me about leadership in this industry, and I've got lots of other examples of leadership that is poor. I think there's a tendency to focus on leaders being at the top of the organisations, but they're not. Well, you as elected safety representatives are all leaders for your constituents. You are leaders on the installations and leaders in the process plant, etc. where you are working. You are, you are very key leaders to me. And so my expectation is that everybody in this room, everybody in this room is accountable for the delivery of hydrocarbon release reduction and major hazard risk control. And by that I also mean the, the night representatives who are here, who are working in catering. You know, actually, you have, got, you have got an obligation to stand up when you see things that aren't right. I need you to play your part. Everybody in this room needs to play their part. So I think I just want to finish off by saying um, a huge thank you to you for taking the time out. I know for some of you, it comes at your own, in your own time. Um, I want to thank you for the contribution that you've made to health and safety and the oil and gas sector so far. And I want to very much encourage you um, to play your part and to kind of think about what more you can actually do to protect the safety of oil and gas workers in the UK. Thank you.